ESPN FC post game. The final whistle has just gone at the Etihad Manchester City 4, Arsenal 1. Mark Donaldson alongside Janusz Mihalik. Let's get straight to this, Janusz. Plenty guests still to join us. What was the biggest takeaway for you from that game? Well, I mean, first and foremost, it was just demolition, uh, you know, physically, uh, psychologically, especially with the goal just before halftime, technically and tactically, but most important, tactically, right? Because uh, Pep did tinker, but he tinkered in the right way. We always knew that he's going to do something. I think the lineup picks itself, but I think, you know, I think matching uh, uh, Arsenal with four in the back was the right move, dropping John Stones there. And the reason for that was, of course, uh, because of Manuel Akanji. A, I think we've seen with three in the back against Bayern Munich that he did struggle a little bit. Uh, having played on the left-hand side, that doesn't help. And, and obviously knowing the strength of Arsenal in the wide areas, uh, in particular uh, with Saka and Martinelli, who's had an incredible season so far, I think that that also allowed uh, the likes of Grealish and Bernardo Silva not to allow those two to attack, right? Because they were, uh, they were a little bit higher and they just prevented Arsenal from doing anything. Uh, you know, the the fact centrally that, as we knew, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Rodri is an excellent player and Thomas Partey is absolutely no match. Uh, just to uh, just to talk about that, uh, not to even mention a monstrous uh, performance uh, yeah. from Kevin De Bruyne. Arsenal didn't win their individual battles. This was the biggest game of their season. It was the biggest league game for Manchester City as well. It looked like it for City, defending from the front, the energy from Kevin De Bruyne up front supporting Erling Holland, then dropping back into support. Thomas Partey couldn't handle it. But for Arsenal to produce that first half display when they knew it was the biggest game of their season so far, what does that tell you? Well, not, nothing much, uh, nothing much in, in a way that, uh, you know, I wrote, you know, one of my first notes was, can Arsenal uh, handle that sort of pressure? They've showed that they can handle pressure uh, throughout the season, but this is, you know, this is two different levels, two or three different levels at this stage, right? I think, you know, maybe with some additions next season, I've mentioned uh, Thomas Partey for a reason, uh, because, you know, if, if Declan Rice really wants to come, this is the sort of player that you need to protect the back for, right? I mean, he would be at the very least a match for Rodri, not to say that he would have done it himself, because you saw, as I mentioned, tactically what Bernardo Silva and Gundogan did. Look, I mean, the change in tactics was uh, not just a, a, a four in the back, but to mm -hmm. me, this was a four-four-two. This was De Bruyne playing alongside uh, Erling Haaland, and you saw the stats, right? Not just the goals. Haaland scores two mm -hmm. goals, two assists for uh, for uh, uh, Haaland as well. I mean, these two uh, couldn't be handled, and and you know, if you even if you even look aside from that, I don't think Arsenal was allowed to do anything. It's not a question of Mikel Arteta not wanting his team to be proactive. There were no passing lane whatsoever. Forget the wide areas. There was nothing in the middle. Uh, so it, it's just the difference between the two sides. As good a season as you've seen from Arsenal, and it's been excellent. It's a learning curve. They understand probably even better now uh, what, what it's going to take to unseed Manchester City because it's not going to be easier uh, next season as well. You just hope that you have that experience right now. You've led the league for a long time. You always knew that Manchester City have way more quality, and it came to roost. It was four. Holland near the end after he's taken his little bobble off and in full flow, his hair... And his shot ended up in the back of the net. To make it 4-1 and put more of a gloss on a scoreline for Man City, we saw Pep Guardiola when they conceded to Arsenal through Rob Holding. He was annoyed. He was frustrated. And they have got a tendency to concede one goal in the last several games. The issue for the opposition is they score loads of goals. Is that the best Arsenal could have hoped for with that performance, losing by just three goals? Because they could have been out of sight, Manchester City, by more than the three goals. Well, of course. I mean, if you look at the, you know, <laughs> the battle between uh, uh, Erling Haaland and Ramsdale, I mean, Erling Haaland had tremendous opportunities. Ramsdale was big. Uh, he wasn't big. He made one mistake, I think, on the very first goal uh, uh, of the game from De Bruyne. I think he needs to save that uh, uh, that strike. But but as I've said, uh, uh, 
you know, uh, for Arsenal, I think they would have been happy going into halftime at 1-0. Unfortunately, that goal, and until now, we're still not sure, right? I mean, we're reading everywhere. Uh, where were the line drawn, uh, lines drawn and all of that? But I don't think it wouldn't have mattered because uh, Manchester City would, were in complete control. I mean, they didn't even have a half a chance until they scored that goal. And as we know, uh, by then, some of the key players were withdrawn as well. So uh, I think if you Arsenal, you take it on the chin. I think to a degree, you always knew that this could have come. I think everybody around uh, anticipated that Manchester City in this sort of form, and they were, they've were they been showing that form as of late, were just clearly a much better team. It just came too early for Arsenal, as simple as that. There is nothing that Mikel Arteta could have done, really nothing, absolutely nothing he could have done. Uh, his players just uh, weren't at that level. Well, Arsenal can look back on this, and, and City are two points behind with two games in hand, huge favourites to win the title. Arsenal can look back on this based on what you've said and how well City played today and think, you know what, it wasn't the City game that was our undoing. It was the games recently where they've drawn too many, they've dropped points, they've had 2-0 leads and they've let them slip. That's what they'll look back on and think, you know what, it could have been ours, but it doesn't look like it will be now, does it? Well, I mean, you know, just look, you know, the, the, the three draws and the loss. I mean, that ten, that's, I think, 10 goals in the, in the last four games, yeah. right? And if you think, I mean, the two games in hand, City, you know, it's really one point when you think about it because the goal difference is, is something that uh, Arsenal probably uh, is, is not going to, you know, they're not going to come uh, closer. And by the way, uh, you know, they have Chelsea, Newcastle and Brighton, you know, in the next three games and City much, much easier schedule. So, uh, you know, this game decided, I think there was a game of truth I I in a way, but you're quite right. I mean, that soft patch in the last three games opened the door for Manchester City and they didn't need an opening, right? They were already in a great form, winning games left, right in all competitions right now. Uh, uh, obviously still in a fight with Real Madrid and, and with Manchester United uh, in FA Cup final. So uh, 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 you're absolutely right. Those three games uh, were at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I want to bring in Luis Miguel Echegaray, who watched the game. From ESPN FC, Luis Miguel, what's your take from what you saw? Well, listen, uh, the first thing I want to say is that Arsenal didn't lose the title today. They already lost it against Southampton. They lost it against West Ham. They lost it against Liverpool. When you give points away in that manner, and perhaps you can be forgiven for having tough tests against the likes of Liverpool, even though they're struggling, maybe even West Ham as well, because you're away from home. But you're, when you're at home at Emirates Stadium and you are trying to resuscitate a 3-1 drop, bringing it back to 3-0, you've lost the deal. And, and honestly, one thing is that you can say about Arsenal is like, we have to remember that they are the youngest squad in the Premier League for a reason. And, and I think that, you know, the the cracks were beginning to show in that period. So I'm with Janos 100%. There is nothing mm. Mikel Arteta could have done today, Mark, to make it happen. Man City were on absolute fire. And when you have Erlen Haaland, when you have Kevin De Bruyne basically just being, you know, one of the most formidable duos that you've seen so far in this season, then not much can be done. In fact, that first opening goal, I thought Arsenal did a really good job at pressing. It's just that Haaland is a transformer, Mark. He held the ball beautifully, releases Kevin De Bruyne, and then the midfielder, who's arguably one of the best the Premier League has ever seen, makes it happen. There is nothing Arsenal could have done. So now I'm thinking, Man City, can you actually now win this treble? Because I worry for Real Madrid, and I worry for Manchester United in the FA Cup final. That's how good... Man City were, Mark, and I think Arsenal, you know, fan, the Arsenal fans should be very happy at the fact that, you know, you're going to get Champions League football, you're still trying to fight, Mikel Arteta has a great project here, but when you have this kind of team like Man City clicking in all cylinders, there's nothing left to do. Yeah, the story today is Manchester City, because like Erling Haaland, like Kevin De Bruyne today, they were unplayable. But you still can't make individual mistakes. Thomas Partey didn't wake up till probably just before half time. Rob Holding might have scored near the end, but he got ragdolled by Erling Haaland. And you can think and you can say, well, since Saliba went out, they've not looked the same team. It's tough to just say, put it on Rob Holding. That's, that's not what we're here to do. We're here to praise Manchester City today because at times, I don't know if any team in the world could have, could have managed to, to play against them today. Yeah, 100%. In fact, it could have been way more than that because Aaron Ramsdale sure. did some formidable saves against uh, Erling Haaland. So all in all, this is really about Manchester City and just how good they were today. The fact that Pep Guardiola was fuming 
after that Rob Holding goal says everything. He wanted perfection and he almost got it. And you said it at the beginning there, Mark, you know, when, uh, when Thor put his hair down, you knew that business was done. This was a Man City win and this was a Man City title for them to get. So now all they have to do really, I know there's some tough games ahead. I know that their calendar is packed, but really, you know, they can even afford to lose another match and they'll still take this title home. So really commendable for Manchester City, tremendous for Manchester City and Arsenal. You're still a project in the making, so you should be very happy about that. The final question for you, Luis Miguel, just about Real Madrid and the Champions League. We'll get to the FA Cup final later. That'll take care of itself. How do Real Madrid stop Manchester City if Manchester City replicate the form from the first half today? Yeah, I have no idea. You might have to, you know, get, you know, uh, maybe try and, you know, uh, you know, make sure that the hotel where Man City is staying when they face at the Bernabeu, maybe like the, you know, the uh, the the workers there maybe kick or trip over Holland. I, I don't know what you can do. You can't do anything because the problem last season was when they faced each other in the Champions League. Man City was controlling that game, but then Real Madrid capitalized on the fact that Man City couldn't completely conclude it. Not this time around. Mm -hmm. Now they have a finisher in Erling Haaland. They have a complete package. I think Jack Grealish is having the best season in his Man City career as well. And it's not just about him. John Stones is one of the best centre-backs in Europe right now. And I don't know. I don't know how they can fix it. Because, yes, we do know that Real Madrid is a team that never dies in continental competition. But guess what? They might just face the Green Ripper right now. Because Man City right now are the best team in the world. They're so good. Mm. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.